This is again why I only give you a certain amount of chords usually. In this case, I, you have a couple new chords for Djangology. If you started playing Gypsy Jazz, you could just play, have a handful of shapes, I call them, and move them around, or jazz in general, have a handful of shapes, and then it's up to you to know how well you know your bass notes so that you can quickly move around with the appropriate shape to play the song. Djangology is gonna have a few new chord shapes today, which is why I wanna present this tune, I, which is why I always present this tune in my workshops because of the cool chords that you, a couple new chords, including a diminished chord too. Because the chords are very special in this one. Some books don't show this, that's why I, I want you to use my version of it. A slash C sharp, this chord. A slash C sharp. I wrote this shape. I'm gonna yell it out in case you're going, what is this? Nine, C sharp. And then skip a string, seven. Nine on the third string. And then 10. And if you can only do three strings, that would be just fine. Okay, three notes are fine for this, but I wrote it as four notes. It's just a big stretch. That's an A major triad with the C sharp in the bass. If you know this, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but the C sharp is the third of the chord. So you have the third in the bass, this sound. So what does that mean to us? Well, that means if we flatted it, it could be an A minor with the C in the bass. And then what, what doesn't change are these three notes. That's just the root, the fifth, and the root. That's really cool. Again, it's just a power chord. It's... But the power chord, as you probably know, doesn't tell us whether the chord is major or minor. We need a third. And this is where, in this particular shape, the third is in the bass. It's very melodic is what I'm saying by having the third in the bass, because that's what tells you whether it's major or minor, a little bit special. But I want to show you really where the shape comes from. It comes from this chord. Yep, free bird. Right there, that second chord. D slash F sharp. You, you guys have probably played it like that before, but you probably would not refinger it like this. But now if you do, now it's movable. And that's where that shape comes from for the guitar player, is that D slash F sharp that you would typically do it like this. Here's A slash C sharp. So it's so melodic with the third in the bass. Even just to demonstrate again with the making it minor, here's D slash F sharp. D minor slash F. Okay, just think of it like this. Here's D, here's D minor. So all you're doing is taking the high note and putting it in the bass. But wow, what a difference it makes by putting it in the bass. Well, Django used that quite a bit. That sound. He loved chromatic bass lines, and that's what's happening here. There I'm kind of bringing, I'm using the point of the pick this time. I'm bringing out the bass line a lot more if you didn't notice. I'm not just being polite. I'm actually going. But here's how I wrote it. I'll do it really slow so you can follow along the tabs here. Of space and it just repeats. This B section is just a scale going up one, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four. 
and that those licks are written there. Um, uh, or this. You know, those ending licks. Or this, one. And that's called the classic ending lick that you learn in minor swing. One. I wrote three different ending licks out for this song. The first one being this. The second one being this. And the third one being the classic ending lick, one. And again, what's happening on that recording is Django's playing the bluesy lick, one. While Stefan is playing the classic ending lick, number three, one. And it sounds so cool. And now it's this. Five one. And the second ending. Here comes that B section, A flat. Step to A. 